Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Granite Rock's third product knowledge seminar. My name is Jackie Serrano, and I will be your host today. For today's seminar, we have a very special guest who is an expert in the world of brick. We hope you are all as thrilled and ready to learn as we are. For everyone's information, we will be recording this session in order to grant replay access to those who are unable to join our live event today. With that being said, I want to remind you all about the amazing features available to you through our Product Knowledge Seminar dashboard. From the dashboard, you are able to replay all the past sessions at your convenience. You can take our surveys to help us improve and in exchange for your feedback, score some free Granite Rock gear. You can also access relevant documents that will enhance your professional development. Before we get started, we ask everyone to please keep yourselves muted and camera off. The chat is open, so we encourage questions or comments throughout the meeting. If you happen to have a question, please add it to the chat section and we will try to answer them as soon as possible. I would now like to introduce our expert guest speaker, Suzanne Best from HC Muddox. Suzanne is the Bay Area Territory Manager and Outside Sales Rep. HC Muddox is one of the region's leading brick manufacturers. They supply a large distributor network that produces clay products that include standard face brick, thin brick, flue liners, pavers, pool coping, and structural brick. On the daily, HC Muddox assists architects, homeowners, and contractors in selecting the right product for the job. Whether it's thin brick, base brick, structural brick, or paving products that your project requires, HC Muddox is ready to assist you in your selection and guide you through the process of design and application. Susan, is there anything else you would like to add about yourself or the company? No, Jackie, I think you covered it really well. Okay, so then I'll hand it off to you so you can start with your presentation. Alrighty, thanks Jackie. I am super excited to be here today and talk to you guys about something I am super passionate about, which is clay brick. And um, I'm gonna pull up my presentation right now, share my screen and then just check and make sure that uh, we're good to go. Can you see that? Yep. Okay, per perfect. Um, well, um, on my um, beginning screen here, you guys can see two names, HC Medix and Interstate Brick. And I represent um, products from both of these companies. Um, we're both owned by the same parent company, which is Pacific Coast Building Products. And you may recognize the Basilite or the Pabco or Alcal logos there. Anytime you see a house logo, um, that means that we are owned by PCBP, which is a family-owned company for um, about the last 70 years. Um, we actually uh, have been around for longer than that, for 143 years. Uh, not myself, but um, Harry Medix um, founded this clay brick company um, way back in 1878, and he set up the plant in Sacramento. Um, right at that time. And then about 70 years ago, we moved to a new, um, a newer location, um, kind of near Elk Grove. If you're ever in the area um, and you want to come take a plant tour, I can easily set that up for you. So HC Muddox, um, just a few facts because both of our plants are really different. Um, we do, like Jackie said, make face brick, thin structural pavers um, and fire brick. Our plant is pretty small in the world of bricks. Um, brick is meant to be made in volume, um, in tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands. Um, our plant is uh, a little bit smaller and um, every brick that we send out, um, someone actually touches it by hand. Uh, we have a very small kiln, one of the smallest in the country, um, and it's, it's a gas kiln that we keep on 24-7 um, have a fireman there 24 seven um, because it's getting over 2000 degrees at points. So um, our biggest um, market is in thin brick. Um, as you know, in the state of California, there's there's more thin brick than, than full brick jobs. And um, so we accommodate that. 
we have a maximum length of 12 inches that we can make to. Um, our manufacturing equipment won't allow us to make anything um, that's bigger than that. We do custom orders all the time, and we also do custom colors, um, which is very unique um, in the brick industry now. So um, this is actually facts about interstate. Um, so interstate, oops, nope, wrong slide. Anyway, interstate is, um, I've got the wrong slide in here, my apologies, but interstate brick has been around about the same amount of time as HC Medix. And you're probably wondering why I would need two different big brick plants to buy from. Basically, what we like to sell out of the interstate plant is things that we don't have at HC Muddock. So at our interstate plant, we actually have some gray colors, which are very popular right now. And we also can make a brick that is 16 inches long. So we have a different capacity at that plant. The plant is huge. Um, it has four different production lines. It has massive kilns. Um, there's just a very high level of production. Really, no one touches the brick. It's all done by robotics. So just incredibly different production methods. Um, so let's talk about thin brick first, because that is probably about 70% of what we sell. Um, not sure if you're aware here in the state of um, California or in the West Coast in general. Um, there was a size that was um, brought to the market to keep the East Coast brick suppliers out, and that's the two and a half by eight, or otherwise called the standard thin brick. That's your first um, product there on the left. And then um, to the right here, um, that is our modular. And modular is a size that is known around the country. It courses out well with um, grout lines. Um, so those would be the two um, most common uh, sizes that you would probably be looking for, but we also do make Normans, Jumbos, um, and some other sizes. So um, what you may see at the yards or on our price book um, is pretty much the full compilation of what we sell. Um, and so don't don't be limited by what's in the yard. Always ask because we do have a yard full of materials. Um, so the um, one thing about thin brick is, is that um, corners are very critical to a project. And as you can see in the right hand picture, that is um, a building that is actually done with thin brick. If you looked at it, you'd probably say, oh, well, that's that's full brick. Um, but one of the things that makes this look like a um, full brick project is that they use corners and corners are critical to um, wrapping the corners. So that you don't have um, an, an edge that looks like there's two pieces there. Um, thin brick uh, corners are about three times the cost of flats because they are saw cut by hand. So we literally have four saw cutters that are at our um, plant that are cutting thin brick corners all day long. They, they never stop. <laughs> so um, let's see. Um, here's just a picture of what I was just talking about. This is a thin brick job in um, downtown San Francisco. It's called the Eddie and Taylor building. It's a um, building that is an affordable housing project. If you look in the upper left corner, um, for the most part, you will think that this is full brick, but those are actually corners that have been um, cut and wrapped around the corner to look like full brick. So that's that's what we're going for, is to give that full brick full brick look with thin brick. Um, you may know residential full brick better um, because of what's available in your yards, but um, we do have um, a series, several different series in different sizes. Um, some of these are full brick, some of them are cored. Um, if you see the cores in the brick, this pattern that you're seeing with coring isn't precise, but um, Typically, there's coring in full brick because it's easier to pick up. It's cheaper to ship. Um, and way back when, um, there used to be uh, a manufacturing speed of a, installing about 1,000 brick per day. That has decreased. But um, we price brick in the thousands um, based on um, that ability to install that many. So um, here is an interior residential um, project that we just worked on. It's down in 
um, Dana Point. Um, you can see the beautiful um, architectural details that were done in the stairwell. Um, this was all out of Fulbrick, and this is on the market if you're interested for $18 million. <laughs> um, so we also do make commercial full brick, and you may be asking yourself right now, what is the difference between residential and commercial? Well, really the only difference between those two is that typically on a residential brick, we will put some kind of coating or we may tumble it or do something that looks more like a brick you would see on a house. But anything that is residential can be used for commercial and anything that is commercial can be used for residential. And we are actually in the process of updating and removing those titles so that you will know that any brick can be used um, on any type building. So typically your commercial colors will be a solid color um, and look more like a commercial building. And we do have um, multiple sizes in that in solids and cord. And this would be typical of a commercial, um, a couple of commercial projects. We've got um, multifamily housing with a really cool outdoor TV setup going on there. And then we've got a very unique um, pattern done here. And that's done in um, our cord brick from Interstate. And you'll notice the beautiful um, gray tones that are in this. Like I was saying, we use Interstate mainly to get their um, gray clays. Um, because when we um, mine and then make the brick, we're limited to what is in the clay pits within 100 miles around us. And we do not have any gray tones um, in the state of California in our range to be able to make these brick. It's all just based on Mother Nature and what you dig out of the ground. So um, in the uh, Salt Lake City area, they do have clays that they mine that we can get these colors with. So here's just another few inspirational um, projects, um, some really nice um, patterning there so you can bring some light in. This is very um, popular technique um, right now, um, staggering those brick. Um, another product hey, that you Susan, may know. If I could uh, jump in just a minute with a question yeah. for you. Yeah. Um, go back to that beautiful gray building. That was incredible. <laughs> um, and... Uh, with that said, and you talked about your 100-mile radius, right. do you get lots of questions about uh, supplying brick for green building projects and, yes. and the distance from, from uh, where the material is harvested? Yes, we do. Um, there are some lead um, kind of constantly changing um, rules uh, about lead and um, I believe lead wants you to source material and manufactured product within a 500 mile radius. Um, it, but I think that rule was shifted last year if, if I'm um, thinking of it correctly. Um, when it comes to lead and brick, um, there are so many things that are sustainable about um, the brick making process that you will be able to get um, lead credit um, for um, using clay brick. Um, the One of the things that is um, key to it is that we're literally just digging up clay and shale and we're mixing it with water and a few other things that are made by mother nature, nothing that's not natural. And we're mixing that up and just firing it like a cake. Um, any of the materials that we don't end up using fired brick, unfired brick, or anything like that gets put back into um, what we call a grog pile. Um, and that is um, ground up and we use that again. So from a green perspective, we do that. We also um, harvest the heat off of our 2000 degree kilns and we use that to dry the brick prior to it going through the, um, through the extrusion process or after it's been extruded and before it goes into the kiln. Um, we also capture our water runoff and recycle that. Um, so there, there's multiple points where we are um, able to get you lead credits on a, on a project, but I'm gonna have to look into the mileage because I, I believe that 500 mile um, radius was changed last year. Um, does that answer your question? 
Yes, thank you, Susan. Okay, no problem. Anyone just jump right in. I can't see the hand, <laughs> the little um, thing at the bottom of my screen. I'm just seeing my presentation. So um, just let me know if you've got something. It's always good to look at this again. <laughs> Um, so let's talk about a little bit about structural brick. It may be something that you have not um, heard of. It, if you're looking at it um, and wondering, is that CMU? Um, actually, it's not CMU. It's It looks like it could be, um, but it's made out of clay. And um, the true advantage of using a clay structural brick is that you could actually use this um, as part of the structural walls of your project. And this would um, eliminate the need for you to have to use a CMU block and then add either an anchored brick over it or an adhered brick over it, thereby saving a lot of labor, a lot of time. Um, these structural brick come in the same colors as all of our other brick. Um, they are super strong. Um, so these brick are able to handle heavy loads um, much more so than a um, CMU block. Their strength is in the 15 plus thousand PSI um, and typically your CMU blocks will probably be in the two to three thousand range. Um, so there's multiple things that you can do with this. You're probably noticing those um, cut out hollow areas that are in there and those are meant to be filled um, with rebar and other um, setting materials to be able to strengthen it and give you some um, good sound um, difference and also to help with heat and all of those other things that you're looking at when you're um, looking at the envelope of a, of a building. Um, so from a fire perspective, this one is going to give you a four hour fire rating um, based on how you stagger um, filling those holes. Um, so structural brick is something that we make at HC Muddocks up to 12 inches, and then we also make it up to 16 inches um, back in Utah. Um, of note, most schools in Utah are made with structural brick. Um, they are maintenance free, basically. Um, we've done studies um, on the on commercial buildings and schools and things like that and what's involved in the maintenance. And once you put a structural brick up, um, and seal it or if you need to do a anti-graffiti coating or something like that, there's nothing else that you really need to do. So um, from a maintenance perspective, it's incredibly smart. And we also have um, these structural brick, like I said, that match our other thin brick and other things. And we see um, lots of times where there'll be structural brick um, on the base and then maybe some thin brick or other brick that follow on up the building. These are also fantastic for site walls, um, for garages, for um, fire stations, um, anything where you need that higher uh, fire rating and your interior surface will be um, a clay brick. So, um, Susan, if I yeah. can jump in again, uh, yeah. how about anti graffiti uh, recommendations? Do you have do you have a particular product that works well or um, a recommendation for folks out there in the field? Uh, you know, we do not um, recommend specific brands, um, but I will say that we definitely recommend using a graffiti coating in an area that um, may be susceptible to graffiti. And one of the things to note about that coating is that it can change the color of the bricks slightly. So I've seen like, you know, in the city, where someone's done a anti-graffiti coating only on the first floor and then the, the success of other floors looks slightly different. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I have not heard anything negative about anti-graffiti coatings. I think um, they are specifically designed for clay. Um, they do have some that are just designed for a clay brick. So um, when you use those, it's pretty much like an insurance policy. Um, you definitely don't want to go back and have to paint over the brick because that just becomes a vicious cycle. So specific recommendation for brand, sorry, I don't, but um, I highly recommend it in areas that you would definitely need it. So great. Thank you. And you just know, for the yeah. 
folks out there, if anybody's got a question, don't hesitate to put it in the chat. We're talking with Susan Best from HC Muddox. And uh, back to you, Susan, go ahead. Awesome, thanks. I appreciate the questions because there's lots of information I've got that, um, you know, that I can give you and help you with your projects. So um, one of the things that you probably stock in your yards or, or see around is our pavers. And we make those in multiple sizes and dimensions. Um, if you're in the city of San Francisco and walking on Market Street, you're gonna see um, our beveled um, edge paver here on the right hand side. Um, we do make pavers that have some coatings on it, um, some that may be tumbled. Um, these are all just aesthetically what you're looking for as far as size. Now there's two different classifications of pavers. Um, one would be just for residential, like I'm gonna do a pathway in my yard or out by my pool, and that has a certain ASTM classification, but we also do have commercial pavers um, where you'd use them where there'd be multiple trucks driving over it or, uh, you know, excessive use. So um, I can give you all the information that you need as far as classifications if you're working on a commercial project. Um, typically with a residential one, um, you wouldn't be dealing with those specifications, but we've got an entire technical team behind me that is um, ready and willing to help you with details. So this is some of our pavers in a residential and a commercial application. Just a few um, you know, ideas on patterning and design. On the left-hand side, this is the University of Texas in Austin. Um, they actually did an entire walkway. They basically took the uh, street out that was used with cars and all that kind of stuff and turned this into a pedestrian pathway that's really beautiful. Um, this happens to be um, a commercial grade project because they would have cars and crossing over in some of the intersections. But um, we actually ended up doing a custom color and they did a custom pattern and ultimately it is fantastic. So um, we do also make pool coping and bullnose. Um, we stock some colors, um, but we could also do some custom things as you may need it. And um, we've got smooth or wire cut. Um, and when I say smooth or wire cut, I guess I'll clarify what that is. So in our manufacturing process, um, we actually have wires that are tied to um, a wheel and um, those actually cut through the clay as it's being extruded and we end up getting a wire cut finish. With a smooth brick, like you see here, beautiful pool coping edge, we would force that or extrude that through our die and no wires would end up cutting it so we can get a really smooth finish. It's more expensive to make a smooth finished brick um, because we're literally cutting one at a time um, and wire cut we can make in multiples. So when you get pricing for smooth or wire cut, you'll know that smooth is gonna be quite a bit more. So just another good example of an outdoor project. Um, so in the past, we have made our own flu liners, um, but our manufacturing equipment is no longer um, able to do those and the investment in making flu liners didn't make sense. So we actually have a, um, a relationship and we are the West Coast distributors of clay flu liners from Superior Clay. So I can get you any of those that you may need. And probably one of our most popular products, um, because there's not many people still making it, is uh, Firebrick. Um, and that's on the left-hand side. Um, we do actually ship Firebrick around the country um, because not many people can make an ebony. And um, we also ship a lot of the Sutter Gold. But um, the Firebrick, you may be wondering, what is Firebrick and why is it different than another brick? Well, basically fire brick has been tested to perform um, in a high um, degree setting. So a pizza oven, a fireplace, um, fire pit, all of those kind of things. So we do specific testing for this brick um, and it qualifies it to be a fire brick. Um, our other materials that we make, regular clay brick, uh, thin brick, all of those kind of things, we haven't tested 
that to be fire brick. And so ultimately you could take our thin brick and our other brick and put it in a fire and it's not going to burn because it's already been burned in the um, kiln in that process. So we highly recommend because we've tested this that fire brick be used in any of your um, fire settings. So here's a good example. Um, this is a really cool pattern here on the right of a, um, a split um, thin brick just done on an angle. And we've got a little bit of fire brick and some others inside there. Um, super excited to announce that we have a new product. Um, it's um, Roman based on um, the old uh, Roman size brick. Um, way back when, brick has been around for about 9,000 years. And I uh, guess we're trending now, coming back with uh, the Roman size. And typically the Roman size is um, a narrower profile brick. Um, and we've got that in four colors and we're stocking it in our yard. Um, these, some have textures, some don't. Um, but these can be used um, in a residential application um, on this narrow side as a paver. Um, we have them cut down as flats and as corners. So in the um, highly narrow lineal um, world of you know, products right now with thin stone and all of those kind of things, this is a product that may work um, for a project of yours. So um, let's recap um, actually what we have at Muddix. Um, we've got 32 thin brick colors, 25 residential. So notice that 32, like I said, about 70% of our business is thin brick. So that's the bulk of where um, our colors and products are. Um, but we do make you know, limited colors in the structural series, um, and then a lot with pavers. That's that's the secondary part of our business. Um, and then for fire brick and for Roman brick. And as far as products, we do sell, um, to kind of touch back on um, products that you would put on a brick, we do represent EcoChem um, cleaning supplies, and they have an entire line of, I wanna say like 15 different products. Um, they are very underutilized in the West. Um, it's common practice in the East to completely clean your completed masonry project, but um, we do have the solution for just about every issue from efflorescence, which is um, water and salt leaching up through clay because the concrete maybe wasn't cured long enough. We do have um, things to clean stains. We have just all kinds of products and what's cool about their um, materials are that they um, are spray on and you don't have to scrub um, so that's that's a really um, great product line um, they're very well respected in the clay masonry cleaning supply um, chain um, we also do name brick um, we can do those for you know special projects that you may have um, we sell mortar clay um, Pitching mound brick, not sure if you're aware under the pitching mound, that's um, green green clay, so clay that hasn't been fired. Um, and then um, we also have the install systems where they're, um, they're liners and you just pop the brick into it and it's got its own custom spacer. It's kind of a, um, like I've never laid brick before solution where you can easily um, put up a brick wall pretty quickly. We've got systems for exterior that have um, a metal backing to them that will give you a fire rating. And then we also have um, kind of a sticky um, system that is a plastic liner and you can pop those in for um, mainly for residential. Um, so another thing that we do here at HC Medix is that we um, we can do custom blends. You'll notice on the left hand side there that there's a super cool um, striping um, that they did on this uh, student housing, I believe. Um, so I think a lot of what you can do with, with brick is your imagination with designs and patterns. Um, this project on the right is um, we are working with um, a landscape architect on getting a um, blend together for um, the LinkedIn building that's going in right now. Um, so we definitely are able to customize and do very specific things for you um, because we are a boutique plant 
and we can kind of turn on a dime. Um, it's, it's a small group of people. Um, another thing that we can do is custom shapes. Um, here we had an architect um, who's working on a historic renovation and we got the drawing and sent that drawing to our steel fabricators and they made that exact shape that they wanted. Uh, takes time and money to do it, um, but there you see on the right hand side um, that shape coming out of the production line. So that's that's the shape in the green stage and it's heading on down the line to be stacked and then put into the um, drying room and then the kiln. Um, you might be wondering how long it takes to make a brick. And um, from the time that we start to make it, just like as if you're setting up to make a cake and get all your ingredients together and mix it and put it through the oven and everything, it's a two week process. So we don't turn things around quickly. We're kind of, you know, old school. Um, things are done pretty much the way they were thousands of years ago. Um, just, you know, with a few updates, but it is a long process. Um, it's not a speedy, you know, fast return type product, but it will um, be around forever. Basically, we have a 50 year um, lifetime on it, but there's, you know, Great Wall of China is still standing and it's, it's quite quick. So, <laughs> so I've got a question here uh, from the group. And again, everybody if you've got a question out there, uh, please put it in chat. Are there limitations to the custom shapes that you were just talking about? There are. Um, they It would have to fit within a 12 by 8 shoe box. So because our manufacturing equipment only manufactures up to 12 inches, it would have to fit into that. And then the thickness, we likely could not go over a thickness of six to eight inches because it would be difficult to dry that clay um, in an even fashion and not have it um, crack. Um, clay is, wet clay is very dense. And um, even if you touch on the right hand side, if you touch those green, what we call green, cause they're not fired yet, you can hardly push into it. It's just incredibly dense. So um, trying to dry a big piece of that size is very tricky. Um, you have to control the drying process and make sure that you're not getting cracking. So there's lots of scientific formulations and, and experience that goes into being able to um, properly dry a piece like that. But we have got literally a shapes library of probably like 300 different shapes that we've done over the years since we've been around for a very long time. Um, and we have what we call the boneyard that just has kind of the leftovers from projects and it's just incredible radius shapes um some cool caps and molding and all of those kind of things so we can use those existing um pieces out of our library um to be able to make new things or we can custom design something Thanks. The boneyard sounds fascinating. Oh, get in there and just kind of t look around. It is. I absolutely love going out there. So we have multiple acres, like I said, um, just near Elk Grove. And we have golf courts, uh, golf carts, of course, because it's a huge property. And you just you kind of get in the golf cart and you <laughs> scoot around. Um, we had the boneyards in the dirt area and all of the product that's for sale is on the paved area. Um, so you just kind of get going out there, not on a super wet day because it gets pretty rutted, but um, it's literally leftovers from multiple projects that have been done in the last 70 years. <laughs> so um, it's kind of a history of of what's, uh, you know, gone up in Sacramento and, and San Francisco and Oakland and, you know, all those big cities that are doing historic renovation. And um, we actually just finished a project um, at the corner <clears throat> it's at 2000 Bryant in San Francisco. And um, if you are in the city and um, take a look at that one, that is actually our thin brick. And then there's some full brick that um, we had an artist um, from Denmark that ended up carving some of the brick. And um, it's got some beautiful curves and shapes to it. And um, it is, um, it looks like, when you walk by it, it's kind of like the boneyard, but when you walk by it, you think it's probably over a hundred years old because of the shapes and the beauty of it. Um, just, we've been able to work with some really fun people. Um, the, the guy that did our brick carving actually did the mitt 
at 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 and T Park, <laughs> okay. um, and we did AT and T Park. HC Medix Brick is is all over that, and Thin Brick and Full Brick. So, kind of a little collaboration there. Um, um, Eden, I see your hand up. Uh, if you want to unmute, go ahead, give it a try, and ask your question. That was an accident. Oh. <laughs> hand down. <laughs> it's fascinating. Well, I my I guess my question I did have one in mind was, but it's probably better uh, if we got serious on a project and to, to call in to somebody else. But yeah, yeah, on those custom bricks, I mean, could you say is this like a cost wise? Is this like a you know double or a ten x range of what you would normally be selling, or is that? It, better it question depends, for yeah it, it depends on the quantity that you're making um brick mainly makes sense in quantity so if you have let's say five thousand you have a hundred thousand of these special shapes um hundred thousand wouldn't be a crazy amount um price wise per brick um but if you do five thousand um then yes it would be nuts so the die that you're looking at in that picture um that costs about seven thousand dollars and it it takes about 12 weeks for us to get it from the time we submit the drawing. Um, so we have to calculate that into the cost. Um, and then other than that, that's that's your biggest cost is um, getting the die. Um, and then quantity wise, it, it takes us about two to four hours to change out a color or a shape. And so we have to consider that downtime um, in the cost. So if you're getting a super small order um there's an initial cost just because the machines are down for that amount of time so um i would i would say if you have a large quantity of it you're not going to be paying an excessive amount it's not going to be a crazy amount um but typically um on the other side of that shapes are only a small part of a project um and so more than likely it is going to be a thousand pieces or two thousand pieces or whatever so um, but I would love to talk to you about shapes. It's just fascinating. Um, we also do make specialty angles for thin brick. So um, working on a project right now um, at 250 California Street in San Francisco. It's actually this brick that you see on the bottom. Um, we do custom textures as well. And so that color is our California rose. Um, one of our basic colors, and we've applied a certain um, grit level of sand to it. And um, on that building, which is thin brick only, we are making custom um, custom corners and different angles for them. Um, so that's that's a very um, costly upgrade as well. <laughs> Um, to do those custom angles, um, particularly if it's a smooth finish. Um, if it's a wire cut finish, we can wire cut it and then add um, add the sand to it. But um, we've got so many different ways to manipulate a brick and get you something really cool. Um, you know, it just does amp up the price a little bit, so. Great. Go on. Thank you. Uh huh. Yeah, and I can get you my information, or they can get you the information, and we'd love to talk more about it and uh, maybe get you out to the plant. So we're not just sitting around at HC Mudex. Um, over the COVID kind of craziness, um, a team of us is working on research and development for new products. And um, what you see in the upper left-hand corner is a 24-inch. Um, brick that we're looking at doing. It's a full brick, um, but we're testing it in different colors and textures and um, experimenting with things. On the lower left-hand side, um, we're actually working on a series right now because we don't manufacture gray um, brick here in California because of our clays. So we're working with a clay coat, which is actually um, a clay slurry that we're putting over the top of our just standard color brick and then we're firing it and um, testing um, the cleaning and all of those things right now on it. And that line is going to be um, launching pretty soon. So I'm um, super excited about that. Um, on the right hand side, um, we're constantly manipulating our clays because we have to be within certain absorptions. 
um, based on ASTM. So um, our lighter clays um, on the left hand side, typically a whiter clay has uh, more sand in it and tends to be more brittle and shrinks and there's all kind of issues with lighter sands. That's why you don't see a bright white brick. Like everyone wants a bright white brick, but you have to paint it white to get that. So um, our clay pit that we've been working uh, and digging from for about over 30 years is getting more um, sand at the point that we're digging right now. So we're trying to adjust our um, absorptions and, and materials that we're putting into the lighter colors so that we can meet the ASTMs for um, the commercial standards that are out there. So really cool um, research and development going on. Um, we have lots of different textures that we can make a brick in. Our, our standard is going to be the um, wire cut and smooth. These two are the ones that we would typically crank out and have, you know, most of our products in the yard. However, we do make um, sanded, like you saw the custom sanded one from 250 California. We roll brick um, when it comes down the uh, production line after it's been cut and made into a green brick. We have a roller that we roll it down to give it that old world um, traditional look. Um, we can tumble it when it's green and it kind of dents up or we can tumble it um, here when it's dry and you see these um, chips and it just kind of softens the edges or the corners. Um, lots of other textures that we can do. Um, we these all you know would be an upcharge but we have the capability um, to do some of the textures that you may see on buildings you know in the bigger cities um, from from years ago. So some really really amazing things. We are affiliated with Gladding McBean. That's one of our sister companies. And that is one of the two terracotta manufacturing plants in the country. There's one in Boston and then one in Lincoln, California. Um, so it's about 45 minutes from our plant. It's literally a um, history museum sitting there and they're still manufacturing. Um, but we um, collaborate with them on textures and colors and coatings and all of those kind of things that they do. If you do come to Sacramento, we can also get you into the Lincoln plant. It's really cool. Um, if you can't get to the Lincoln plant and do the Gladding McBean tour, there is a online um, a news station. I think PBS came in and did a video and kind of walks you through it. It's just really interesting. Um, so we have had this website for I don't know how long. And we have spent the last year working on a new website. The focus of the website is going to be um, architectural. So we are um, doing all of the things that we are showing and um, teaching on the website are geared towards um, architects and designers. So there's going to be lots of tools to be able to d design um, and play around with and get um, details and there's going to be a lot of things that architects are going to be running to our new website for. No one in the industry really has um, a super architecturally focused brick website, so it's going to be super cool. Um, we've got new website and literature coming out. Um, our, there's our new tagline, more sizes, more shapes, more possibilities. Um, and we've had um, kind of a, a revamp of um, our logo, our, you know, kind of uh, refresh on our branding. Um, and just a really um, beautiful new look and and way to highlight clay brick um, in today's world. All righty. So it looks like. That's, that's great, great, Susan. Thank you, Thank you so, so much, much for all of that. that. Again, sure. uh, folks out there, if you guys want to uh, put a question in the chat uh, or you can raise your hand, uh, that looks great. Um, I'd like to say, uh, Susan, that um, the UT project, that's my alma mater, and it brought oh, me yes. uh, back to Austin um, <laughs> wonderfully um, and Ooh. gave my gave my heart a thrill. Um, <laughs> when I kind of want to talk about new trends, um, for example, you brought Roman back. Mm -hmm. um, was that by popular demand? Why did you bring Roman back? Yes. Um, that that is by demand. Um, we're literally in the clay brick industry competing with um, manufactured stone and real stone. And um, clay brick is um, difficult, more difficult to make in longer sizes because we get 
um, as we extrude it and put it in through all of its processes, it can what we call banana or kind of warp and and move around um, as, as it becomes thin. Um, it's a much different process than making manufactured stone where they make it in molds and, and all of these things. So it's super tricky. Um, the longer the brick, the more tricky it is to make. And so with this Roman line um, that we've, that we're introducing, or we already have the product for, um, we actually have used a process in manufacturing called paper cut so that we can soften the edges and, and, um, not not highlight that it's difficult to make a longer brick um and so we literally put brown paper on the brick after it's come through and been extruded and run water over the top of it and then have something that strips that paper off and what it does is it gives it kind of a modeled or um just we call it a chatter as it comes through and we tear that paper off and it has this beautiful old world look to it well we're talking about up to a 12 inch brick. So that gets trickier making those sizes. So all of this texturing and the sand and coatings that we're putting on it, just give it this beautiful old world look without thinking, oh, that brick's not exactly straight like a commercial brick maybe. So um, as long as you know those longer profiles are in, we're kind of behind the scenes in our research and development, working on new things like the 22 or, um, trying to compete with some of the um, European manufacturers that are doing, you know, some really cool things in the longer sizes. So, cool. Um, and what are the emerging trends? What are what do you see that's kind of cutting edge? Um, what are you seeing a demand for? Um, you know, the the cutting edge things. I my background is on. I'm an interior designer, so I'm kind of a a, a nerd. <laughs> Um, designer and then you throw in clay and it gets really nerdy but um, the the things that we're seeing of course are the the lineal things but we're also seeing um, trending uh, I, I think there's a slow um, kind of drop off of the grays whites and blacks those are always be around but we're kind of making the loop right now into um, back into the tans and the natural colors. Um, I know um, some of the glaze, uh, the tile glazed um, manufacturers kind of uh, lead the trends. And um, so they're all going to these really natural hues and tones. So we are limited by the clay that we dig out of the ground and, and by our research and development and making colors. But we're we're in the lab working on some of those tans that I believe are re-emerging um, as we leave, you know, the gray and, and blacks and stuff. It's a, it's a very um, typical cycle. It's a design cycle where things come and go and, you know, stuff in the 70s is in in the 90s. It's, it's that design cycle. Um, from a color perspective, the clay coats that I showed you, um, there's, there's really... Um, I think going to be a high demand for coated products and not necessarily glazed. So glazing, um, you can get matte sheens and, and shiny coats on glazing, but I think that there's a trending um, across the world with these coated project products with natural materials. So we're literally taking the clay brick and putting powdered clay on top of it and we're firing it. Um, so that may be an emergence back to very traditional brick making. Um, but I think color palette um, is, is the most difficult thing with brick because each of us are limited by our clay pits. So I think as a solution to that, we're, we're creating things um, that will fill in um, and meet the design demand. Um, so I, I haven't seen anything in shapes yet. Um, I know brick block has been um, kind of trending for the last five years or so, um, but in shapes, I haven't seen anything in, in the brick world um, that's changing. Yeah, the, um, the ebony, I, I assume it's the inside of a pizza oven, that ebony fire brick was yes, it is. beautiful. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. And yeah. Um, 
speaking to one of my one of my passions aside from the University of Texas also <laughs> the, uh, the the world of pizza um, talk about your your favorite projects or the most astounding projects again um, another passion of mine is is baseball and I love at t Park or whatever Ooh. we call it now um, <laughs> and so that's got to be a, a highlight for you guys what what was what are some of the other uh, projects that you think are just spectacular um I think what what well I'm working on something right now that I have not seen done in the city of San Francisco um, it's a project at 555 Larkin in downtown San Francisco. Um, we just finished making the material for it. Um, these types of projects are in the works for many, many years. Um, this one is a culmination of probably, you know, on the design side, three to five years. Um, but the, the architects that I'm working with have designed the most unique um, wave or curved wall system. And they've, they've built a um, a backing on it and this thin brick is sticking over the top of it and it kind of just waves around. It's going to be really, really unique. I think it's an affordable housing project. Um, that one coming up is pretty cool. Um, super excited for that to literally get off the ground. Um, there's a really neat project um, in downtown San Francisco um, that's called Eddie and Taylor. Um, and it is... Um, a very like happy building. It's a four color blend. Um, it's got some really great design details to it. It's just super unique. It's it's the same architect that's um, doing the the um, Larkin project. Um, I'm trying to think of. Uh, we've done some historic renovation projects that are really cool. It's uh, you know they'll take a piece of brick off a building and say, can you duplicate this and make us 25 of them or whatever. Um, but to be able to be part of a renovation where they're, um, you know, preserving a building that's been there for over 100 years is just super nerdy and exciting for me, um, you know, that they're not um, kind of tearing it down. But as you go throughout the city, um, you will see um, multiple examples of our brick because we're so close to um, Sacramento. Um, but the city of Sacramento literally has project upon project because that's the brick was made and just, you know, hauled over to the job site. Um, there's one, there's one other I'm trying to think of. Hmm. I just lost it, but um, yeah, it's, it's a culmination of what I love is in Oakland and San Francisco of old brick and the new brick kind of coming in and it's always very exciting when a clay brick project is built because there's so many other materials now and when i see a clay brick project go up i think okay ours is going to be around for a really long time and maybe that other one's not going to be around um so i just think when you build with clay brick you're adding to the history and um you're you know, it's longevity that you're looking for if you're using clay. Um, I'll have to think of some other really cool projects that we've worked on. Oh, I know another one. Um, so we work with um, Frank Geary. Um, he is obsessed with our brick. Um, he has a, his offices down in Southern California. And we've worked on multiple buildings with him. And um, more recently, um, he we had a collaboration where we custom designed a brick for him. And there's a huge like 14,000 square foot house or something going in in Atherton. And um, it, it's kind of like, you know, spaceship type building that he does. But um, we've we've collaborated with him on residential and commercial. And more recently, um, a town over in southern France is building a um, museum and they literally ordered um, H.C. Muddock's brick and we shipped it to Paris, um, loads and loads and loads of it. <laughs> so I'm super was, excited to see that building. <laughs> yeah, did you get to go on that sales call? Was that your? Uh, <laughs> no one has gone on it yet, but I've been following um, the grand opening of the building is in June. And at some point I will go see it. I, I just can't get over the fact that, you know, we're, we're in several different countries, but um, to be right outside of, you know, Paris is pretty exciting, so. 
Very cool. Well, you've been great. I'm going to, uh, I thank you so much. Very, very educational. And I'm going to hand it back to Jackie. Perfect. And uh, thanks again, Susan. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Susan. I want to thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate your participation and hope it was of your liking. Please do not forget to take this session survey. Like I previously mentioned, it can be accessed through your product knowledge seminar dashboard. We also hope to see you all here next week, Thursday, May 6th, to further expand your knowledge on porcelain pavers. Our guest speaker will be Teresa Martin from MSI Hardscapes, same time as today, 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. Once again, I would like to thank Susan for taking time to today to share her knowledge with us. Thank you, Keith, for, for helping facilitate that concludes today's product knowledge seminar. Be safe, everyone, and rock on. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you.